S. Marshall books a remote home in an overview neighborhood while remaining in Detroit for a prospective employee meeting. She's shocked to find the property is now involved by a young fellow named Keith who leased the property through an alternate application. With a tempest seething outside and no lodging opening, Tess winds up with no choice except to go through the night in the house with Keith. At first, Tess is startled by Keith's off-kilter and weird way of behaving, yet she at last gets used to him. That evening, Tess sees her room entryway has been opened and hears somebody moving around the house. She then hears Keith uttering sounds in his rest, so she goes to wake him. After another off-kilter experience, Tess returns to her room and nods off. The following morning, Tess stirs to find that Keith has gone out for the afternoon. She goes to her new employee screening and is cautioned that the local she is remaining in is dangerous. After getting back to the rental, she is pursued inside by a vagrant who requests she take off from the house. Expecting to utilize the bathroom, Tess scans the home for a roll of tissue. She wanders into the storm cellar and inadvertently locks herself inside. She looks for an exit plan and coincidentally finds a secret entryway in the storm cellar, prompting a mysterious passageway. In the passage, Tess finds proof that somebody was held hostage and recorded. Tess escapes the storm cellar, being liberated from the storm cellar by Keith, upon his revisitation of the home. At the point when she lets Keith know what she has seen, he adventures down to the storm cellar to explore. At the point when Keith doesn't return, Tess returns down after him and finds another underground passage driving further under the house. Following Keith's shouts, Tess finds him asserting that there is somebody in the passage and that they messed with him. As Tess panics, a huge, exposed, disfigured female out of nowhere goes after the pair and severely kills Keith, over and over crushing his head into the walls of the passage. After 14 days, sitcom entertainer A.J. Gaines he has been terminated from his show because of assault charges by a co-star. Compelled to offer his resources for pay for his legitimate expenses, A.J. goes to one of his investment properties in Detroit he intends to sell, which is uncovered to be a similar house where Tess and Keith were remaining. He finds their effects still in the house. Accepting the home has drawn in vagrants, he looks for them without much of any result. He then goes out drinking with a companion, where he unconvincingly makes sense of that his co-star assented to engage in sexual relations with him. Upon unsteadily getting once again to the house, A.J. investigates the cellar and finds the secret entryway and passage. He coincidentally finds a room containing a TV playing a video about breastfeeding infant youngsters prior to being pursued by the disfigured lady. Escaping, he falls into a pit close by a still-alive Tess. Tess advises AJ to keep cool-headed and that the lady in the passages, alluded to as the mother, needs them to go about as her kids. The mother powers Tess to drink milk from a container and watches out for her. At the point when A.J. rejects, the mother hauls him away to the television room and powers him to breastfeed. Tess makes a move to escape the storm cellar and barely gets away from the house with the assistance of Andre, the vagrant she was pursued by before. Andre cautions her to leave the neighborhood before it gets dull, as the mother goes out hunting around evening time, and criticizes her for needing to return into the house to save A.J. A flashback to the 1980s shows the house's unique proprietor, forthcoming, followed and snatched young ladies and held them hostage in the passages, assaulting them and bringing up the resulting kids. While endeavoring to get away, A.J. finds a room that the mother is apparently terrified of. Inside, A.J. tracks down a vegetative candid as well as many tapes of straightforward assaulting various ladies. A.J. inadvertently gives forthright admittance to a weapon, which candid purposes to commit suicide. Taking the weapon, A.J. adventures once more into the passages. Sunsets, and the mother goes out to chase down Tess. Tess runs the mother over with her vehicle, sticking her to the house and apparently killing her. Tess gets back to the cellar passage to track down A.J., just to be unintentionally shot by him in the murkiness. 
The two departure the house with Forthright's firearm close by. After leaving the home, they find the mother has liberated herself from the vehicle. Andre tracks down the pair and makes sense of how the mother is a result of many years of assault and interbreeding. The mother ambushes the gathering and savagely kills Andre prior to pursuing Tess and AJ up a water tower. With no real way to get away, AJ drives Tess over the pinnacle to occupy the mother. The mother leaps off after Tess, protecting her from the fall. As AJ endeavors to apologize to a seriously injured Tess, the mother recovers cognizance and kills him by gouging his eyes out. She endeavors to take Tess back to the house and medical attendant her, yet Tess shoots her in the head with forthcoming's firearm and staggers away, horrendous and damaged.